Hi, good morning, church. Uh, to those who are joining us online, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see all of your beautiful faces here. Some familiar. Hello, good morning. Nice to see you. Um, this morning, we just want to welcome each and every one of you joining us to, into the house of the Lord to come and worship with us and to hear from Him. Uh, I just want to share the birthdays before I share an encouragement. Um, on Friday, we have uh, we only have one birthday this week. On Friday, that is Raiden Bronkhorst. We the other one we ask that you would wish him a happy birthday from us and let him know that he is loved and adored by everyone here at church, and most importantly by God. Um, this morning, I was I was praying with uh, Tyron and Pastor at the back, and I was telling them about I was reading in the week about the story of Moses in the wilderness and how God asks him. Um, when the people are complaining about water and food and how he gets so frustrated and he, he, he strikes the rock with his staff. And I was, especially for them who are leading um, our people in worship and leading the church and for us who are leading our houses or in our workplaces or wherever we find ourselves, we can find ourselves in leadership positions and how easily we can become frustrated with the people around us. But I was, I was saying that God calls us to a life of obedience and most times it isn't pleasant. Most times he's going to tell us to, be, tell us to go out of our comfort zone. Most times it's going to ask us to love our enemies. And we struggle with that. And so this morning I pray that God would just cause in your heart a desire to obey. So that we, we don't need to fall. So that we don't need to be picked up. So that we can stay walking in step with him. And so that, I pray that that just be your encouragement this morning as you worship him out of, of thanks and gratitude. And, and I pray that that would just be our response for what he has done for us. That we would obey. That we would cause others to obey. In Jesus name let's just pray. Father God, this morning we, we just want to say thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your, your sacrifice, O oh God. Thank you that you gave your one and only Son for us. O oh God, that we could be called to life and life in abundance. O oh God, but you do not call us to an easy life, O oh God. You call us to a life that is very hard. O oh God, but oh the joy, oh the reward that is waiting for us. O oh God, I pray this morning, O oh God, for the birth, as you think of riding, O oh God, that you would just, O oh God, have your arms of comfort and love and grace and guidance around him. Oh God, that you would live within his heart. Oh God, I pray and we, we say thank you for his parents. Oh God, I pray that they would continually train him up in the way they should go. Oh, and even when he's old, he will never depart from it. Oh God, I pray for this church this morning. Oh God, for those who are joining us online, for those who are here in the building. Oh God, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, I pray that this morning our outpouring would be that of thanks, that of gratitude, oh God, because we can never thank you for all that you have done, oh God. But I pray this morning, oh God, that the little that we do give you, oh God, we give with our whole heart. Oh God, I pray that we would not be closed hand, handed Christians, oh God, but that we, oh God, we give you everything, oh God, because you have given everything for us. I pray, oh God, this morning, oh God, for your Holy Spirit to awaken a deeper desire, oh God, for relationship with you. And, oh God, out of that relationship, out of that love for you, that we would have a love for others, oh God. Oh God, even that when it gets difficult, oh God, we know that we can run to you, oh God, that you would guide us, oh God, that you would lift us up, oh God, that you would comfort us, that you, oh God, would strengthen us, oh God. I pray, oh God, this morning that we would not leave the same. Oh God, this cannot just be another service, oh God. This cannot just be another worship session, oh God. This cannot just be another word, oh God. Oh God but I pray that it touches us, oh God. That it breaks our heart, O oh God. That, O oh God, we would go out and do what you have called us to do. That we would obey, O oh God, because your word says obedience is greater than sacrifice. So, oh God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just be over us. Pour out your spirit upon this place. Pour out your spirit with those watching. O oh God, in Jesus' name, that this would just be such a sweet smelling aroma unto you. I pray that you would accept it, O oh God, and that this morning everything we do would bring you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This morning I was on the money. I don't know what he drank last night or what he ate last night, but the spirit of the Lord is with that young man this morning. So earlier on this morning, uh, Fred shared with us, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. See, when Jesus stepped down out of heaven onto earth, the earth was broken, the earth was lost, the earth was hurting. Jesus saw a harvest. Often when we look at the world, we see all of the broken things, we see all the hurting things, and we think, you know, we need, the setting needs to be right first before we can reach the harvest. But when Jesus looked at the people, he saw a harvest. When Jesus looked at you and me, he saw a harvest. Amen. So I pray this morning that we will change our perspective. Hmm. As Fred said earlier on, it's easy to become frustrated in this life. And we, right now we're living in a season of offense. I don't know if you've picked it up, but in workplaces, everywhere, everyone is so easily offended today. It doesn't take much. And Jesus often offended the religious leaders of the day, but the hurting and the lost and the broken were drawn towards him. And I pray that our hearts and the way we live our lives, those people will be drawn to us and we to them. Because we have to remember this morning that we too once were lost. We too once were broken. We too once needed a savior. And now that we have this gift, we need to freely give it away. Not just by what we say, but how we live our lives each day. Amazing grace. Stop the Lord Almighty, and our God is. 
He's the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him.
there's no hold on me Cause your grace holds that ground And your grace holds me now And your grace holds me
Listen, listen, take me, take me, and mold me, and use me, fill me. I give my life to the Potter's hand. Father God, this song was just so in tune with this morning's message. Where we are called, we are reminded, Father God, of the lost and our concern for the lost. And here we've just sung this song that says, Use me, take me, fill me, I give my life to the potter's hand. And this morning I pray that this would be more than simply empty words that we are singing but that there would be a new commitment, a fresh commitment that we make, Father God, as we say, use me, Lord. Take my life and use me, Father God. Father, I pray for obedient hearts. I pray, Lord, even as we have sung these songs, that you would continue to, to stir up the soil of our hearts, Father God, so that it would be ready for the seeds to be planted. So to be ready to receive the water and, and to be encouraged to grow and to follow in the example of our master. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing with all I am.
Pastor prayed earlier on, Lord God, we are the clay and you are the potter. We give our lives to you. We surrender our whole being to you to be transformed, Lord God, into instruments of your choosing. But I pray, Lord God, that when you form us into an instrument, Lord God, that we stay in the potter's hand so that you can use us. Lord God, it's not good that we just allow you to form us but we need to stay in you so that you can use us. I pray that we would remain in the potter's hand. Jesus said it this way, I do nothing on my own accord. I only do what I see my Father do. The Holy Spirit not only is a comfort, not only is he a deposit of the glory which is to come, but he's also the leader and the the one who guides us in this life. Oh, Father, won't your Spirit lead us Transform us, renew us. This morning as our pastor speaks, won't you use him as an instrument of your choosing? Oh Lord God, he is safe in your hands this morning. Use him, Lord God, to minister to each heart, to all of us. 
I pray, Lord God, that your word will not return void. And that your word, Lord God, would fall on vessels who are willing and desire, Lord God, to know you and know you in your fullness. In Jesus' name I pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be saved. Awesome time of worship. Sunday school children, you may go to the back with your teachers. It's so blessed to be in the house again. And I see every week we have a few more numbers um, coming in attendance. And so we're glad to have you here this morning. We are blessed to have you here this morning. Those who are online, thank you for joining us. We are so blessed that you have joined us as well. We trust that God would minister to you and bless your heart as you receive this word and as you even enjoyed the time of worship with us. May you be blessed. May you be encouraged. Um, And as you see on the screen, this morning's title is Our Concern for the Lost. I was sharing with the guys early on, it was just so good how God works. Um, Tyron never knows the title of my message when he chooses the song because he does that on a Tuesday already. Um, and so he doesn't know exactly. Yes, he can skim through um, the, the words that I'm going to read from Scripture, but he doesn't know the, the, the main focus of my message. And the songs were again just so appropriate this morning. Uh, I give my life to you. I worship you. I'm all yours. I belong to you. I believe in you. And all those kind of things. And this morning we are reminded that as a child of God, we need to take the next step. Because we should be concerned for the lost. The reality is somebody was concerned about me when I was lost. Somebody ministered into my life, into my heart when I was lost. And today I'm standing here. I'm sure you all can say the same thing. Somebody was concerned about you. And that's why you are here this morning. I want to open with an illustration that I've used before from the pulpit. um, But it is just so relevant and so appropriate. And please allow me just to share this once again. Also, welcome back to Bernie, who's back at church um, after her operation and recovery. It's good to have you here, my wife, my partner. Um, may God bless you and continue to bring perfect healing to you. Two teenage sisters moved to a new communi- community. Not having any friends there, they were only too happy um, when someone invited them to join a Christian youth gathering. Now, after attending several times, the older sister made a commitment and accepted Christ as a personal Savior. And she encouraged her younger sister to do so as well. Now, the younger sister was still very skeptical about this whole, mat- this whole matter. And finally, as a result of the older sister's persistence, the younger sister knelt by the bedside and prayed silently, this prayer. If there really is a God, then put your hand on my head so I can know it. At that very moment, the older sister was impressed by the Spirit to place her hand on her sister's head as she was kneeling and silently praying. Immediately, the younger sister believed. And when she got up from her bedside, she asked her sister, did you put your hand on my head? And the older sister said, yes. The other asked, why did you do that? And she simply replied, God told me to. You see, we are God's hands in this world. We are God's hand and feet and voice in this world. God uses us to do His work here on earth. Now, I'm not limiting God because God can use anything. God can use any means of communication because God's hands are made visible in all areas, creation being one of them. 
But we are one of the primary means that God uses to communicate His love, His compassion, His mercy and grace to those around us. Now we're going to take this a step further, but let's first read the first five verses of Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. And I read it from the NIV translation as displayed on the screen this morning. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs. And from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. May God bless the reading of His Word to us this morning. Now this morning's illustration, how God uses us to be His hand that brings salvation. Although this illustration highlights specifically the fact that God touched the younger sister by using the older sister's hand. It also reminds us of the constant encouragement, the persistent encouragement to make this decision. The story spoke about the older sister who, who constantly encouraged her to make this decision. It wasn't simply the hand that was placed on her head, it was that encouragement that was continually spoken to her, that led her to bow her knee. Now that's the first point this morning. We are meant to have a special concern for the salvation of others. We are meant to have a special concern for the salvation of others. Now let's firstly take a step back and put this back into Paul's context. Paul was focusing on Israel and for their need of salvation. You'll see if you read the, further in the letter, Paul highlights the fact that the Israelites thought they were saved because of their lineage. Because of their bloodline. However, he came to let them know that that was not the case. This was incorrect thinking. Salvation doesn't come from your bloodline, your surname, or whether your parents did something special. Salvation comes through Christ and Christ alone. There is only one way to Jesus. Only one way to God. And that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now before I move on, I want to remind us as a church of the need for us to pray for Israel. Pray for Israel. We need to keep them in our prayers. They are in turmoil. They are still disillusioned about their salvation this very day. And it's extremely difficult to witness to them because they believe they have been chosen and they don't, do not need the salvation because they have it, because of their bloodline. Let's make it a priority to pray for their salvation. Now let's bring it back to our immediate context. You see, Paul had this extreme concern for his nation, Israel. Those who were linked to him through birth, those who were his brothers and sisters, his family members, his friends, and even the leaders, he was concerned about his fellow men. Paul looked upon his fellow men and he was distressed because their condition was tragic. He assures his readers that he's not anti-Jewish. Remember at this point, Paul was predominantly speaking and teaching to the Gentiles. So he's reminding all his listeners and all his readers that he is not an anti-Jew. He is so concerned, he is so distressed at Israel's failure to receive Christ and be used by God in a blessing, as a blessing to this world, so much so that in verse 3 he says, I would rather be cursed than they die not knowing that they need salvation. 
Now looking at our immediate context, our family, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors, our leaders, our country, do we have a desperation for their salvation? Do we have a, a, a great concern for the people of our nation, for our family members? Do we have a deep concern for them like Paul had for the Israelites? You see, it is so easy to fall in the trap of getting involved in church, helping the needy, feeding those who are hungry, leading departments, singing in the worship team, doing all these things that we think we are doing good. But the fact of the matter is this, as good as all of those things are, God calls us not just to mere service, but God calls us to be His hands, His feet, and His voice in all areas of Christian life. And one of these areas are leading people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We have become so burdened to do and to help those in need that we often forget that their biggest need is salvation. Don't get me wrong. We are called to be God's hands as well to help. We are called to be God's feet as well to go, but we are also called to be His voice, to speak the message of Jesus Christ. How often have we gotten those emails or those Facebook messages, please help Susan. She has terminal cancer. Please donate towards a cause and pray for her healing. And we get all involved. We get worked up. We get involved. We share the message. We like the message. We, we spread the word. We donate some money. We pray that God would heal them. We send enough money to help for treatment. But we forget about our salvation. In this urgency to help, did we ever think to stop and pray for our salvation? You see, the other things aren't wrong. But first things must be first. We need to pray for her salvation. We need to pray for the salvation of our loved ones, of our friends, because that is of utmost importance. What has happened to us as believers that we do not get desperate about the salvation of our fellow man? Is it because we are fearful? Is it because we do not know what to say? What if they ask me difficult questions? Did you know that it's okay not to have all the answers? To say, I'll get back to you on that one? Are we ashamed of the gospel? Or are we not desperate enough to share this message with them? Now let me get a little bit morbid here for a moment. Just listen quickly what is awaiting those who are not saved. These aren't my words. Matthew 13 verse 50 says, speaks about a furnace of fire speaks about weeping and gnashing of teeth. I like saying gnashing because I think that's how the teeth will sound. Mark 9.48 says this, Where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched. Revelation 14 verse 10 says they will, they will be tormented with burning sulfur. Revelation 14.11 And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night. Lastly, Revelation 20 verse 15 says, As anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Knowing these things about the future of our loved ones, about our community, about our neighbors, about our colleagues who aren't saved should make us seriously concerned for them. Paul had such a sense of desperation for his people who, yes, they were chosen to be God's children, but they were mistaken. They thought just because they were chosen, just because of the bloodline, just because of the surname, just because my father was king or my dad was the priest or my dad was this or my mother was that, they feel that they are safe. But Paul came to say that that is not the truth. You personally need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. 
You see, that brings me to the second point, that great privileges do not guarantee salvation. Great privileges do not guarantee salvation. Remember what Paul said of the Israelites. They believed they were the chosen nation. They believed they were saved because of their lineage. Matthew Henry in his commentary on the Bible says this, Grace does not run in the blood. Nor are saving benefits always found without the church privileges. Grace does not run in the blood. In our blood, that is. It runs in the blood of Jesus Christ. There are so many people around us who are living with the pretense that they are saved. There are so many things that have brought confusion in the lives of, of many people. False teachers, misguided friends who maybe innocently are leading people astray. Various religions. But the truth of the matter remains. That no matter what we have done or where we come from, the only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. That is what we need to be saying to our fellow man. You see, as simple as it was for me to say that to you this morning should be the simple way that we say it to our fellow man. The only way for you to be saved is to turn to Jesus Christ. So what must we do? Our third point this morning, what must we do? How do we go about sharing the gospel message? Well, there are two things that we must do and two things that we can do. God's hand must be seen in and through our lives, firstly. And secondly, we must be persistent prayer warriors. So in the context of salvation, what does this mean for me? Firstly, we need to put together a list of people who are not saved. Put together a list of people, your people, who are not saved. And focus your prayer for their salvation. This is quite a personal story. My mom and dad, their testimony can confirm the power of prayer. Although my parents were led to the Lord by one of my dad's colleagues, my dad's uncle and aunt had been praying for them and my dad's brothers and, and wives and sister for many years. They were praying for their salvation Year in and year out. I can't remember how many years it was, but it was many years from the point I think that they got married. And God answered their prayer. You might think that the person that led my folks to the Lord, that that was his prayer. I'm not saying he didn't pray for them. Maybe he did. But my uncle, my dad's uncle and aunt were praying for years for their salvation. Today we could say that my dad was saved. His brothers were twins. They are both saved and served in church for many years. My aunt was saved before she passed away. All of them came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see, it was the answer to a persistent prayer warrior. Secondly, we need to get involved physically. We can't just hide behind that fact that we, we're praying for them. That is important and that is good, but we also need to get involved physically. While praying for their salvation, take every opportunity to share about God. Take every possible opportunity to share about God. Excuse me. Pray for God's leading. And sometimes we need to tell the story of Jesus Christ in episodes. Sometimes they aren't ready for the full screening of the story. Sometimes it's too much, it's too overwhelming. So you might have a colleague and, and maybe this week you speak about one episode. You speak your testimony, what God has done in your life. Next week you highlight something else. And every week you come with a different episode until they get the story and you can draw the bigger picture for them about Jesus Christ and what He has done. Other people are ready. They are so desperate. They are so low that when you tell them the story, they are so desperate to hear the whole story because they need Jesus now. 
So we need to be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. I was sharing with Tyron, um, I just finished my, my, my personal devotion, and this morning I was looking to start from a new book. And as I opened my Bible app, the first thing that came to mind, the first name that came to mind was Ezekiel. Okay, fine, let me go and read Ezekiel. It's one of the, the prophets. I'm not so sure what I'm going to get out of it this morning, but okay, let me read Ezekiel chapter 1 this morning. It was early, it was half past five this morning, reading through Ezekiel chapter 1, and he was speaking about the vision that he, was re- the vision that he had seen and experienced just prior to his appointing or calling as prophet. And he was speaking about these four beings that he saw, angelic beings. They had four wings each, and the top wings were touching each other. So each four were connected to each other with their wings touching each other, and their second set of wings, they covered themselves. But what ministered to me this morning as I shared with the guys was that below each creature there was a wheel, The wheel was hovering below each creature. And as the creature moved forward, the wheel would hover directly under it. So it would move forward with it. As the creature moved back, or to the left, or to the right, or upwards, this wheel moved with it. And Ezekiel says the reason why this happened was because the spirit of the creature was in the wheel. So the wheel responded because it shared the same spirit. And I said to them, I was just so impressed this morning that that is exactly how we should respond to the spirit who is in us. We like to take the step first, but we aren't the spirit. We are the wheel below. We must allow the spirit to lead us. And what was that word that you used, Fred? We need to mimic. We need to follow. We need to follow as the Spirit leads. And so when you go and share the gospel message, don't go with your own words. Don't go with your own thoughts because you might lose the conversation or you might get distracted or the person might be frightened. Whenever you go, as I said early on, start with praying. Prepare your heart in the morning to go out. God, give me an opportunity and you lead me. Holy Spirit, you give me the words to speak. You don't have to have a huge elaborate prayer, but just ask God to prepare your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to the right person and to give you the words. To be sensitive to the person that you're going to speak to. You can't speak to an older person like you would speak to a child. You can't speak to a woman like you would speak to a man. You can't speak to somebody who has just experienced a divorce as with someone who has just gotten married. You need to be sensitive. And sometimes we don't know these things, but the Spirit will prompt us what to say. And what He prompts will be perfect. You see, we have to pray about the situation and we have to get physically involved in this situation we have to be led by the spirit not direct the spirit allow the spirit to direct us and as i conclude we need to realize that time is running out i have done so many funerals in this last 10 years and there were times where I wasn't quite sure of the destination of the person lying in front of me. The family could tell me he never went to church. Sometimes I don't even know the family. They got our number on our website and buried somebody in a family attended that I had no idea about the history or the background. And it's quite sad. And I know that I can't judge. I don't know that that last conversation the person had with God. But there have been times when I have buried someone with a smile on my face because I know where they are. I know the person they were. I know how they they honored God with their lives. Now, I don't want to end this sermon with us feeling morbid, but this is the bottom line. If you are not sure of the destination of your family, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, 
then you need to share the message of love with them. Otherwise, you are going to look at their coffin one day and regret it for the rest of your life. Knowing that you could have played a part in changing their final destination. Like I said, we can never judge. We don't know. We don't know the conversations that they had with God. But there are times when we know because of outward expression, outward um, happenings and experiences of people that they don't know Christ. And we are called church. We are instructed by God's word. Go. Therefore, because of what I've done for you, go and make disciples. Go and share that gospel message. Go and share your testimony. Go and share with love, with compassion, but with urgency. Time is running out. If you haven't noticed the signs of the times around us, time is running out. It's about time that we get our hands dirty. It's about, a, about time that our shoes get a bit dusty. Because we need to go. We need to go and let God use our hands. Let God use our feet. Let God use, uh, use our mouths so that we can share of His love. Let's prepare our hearts to receive communion this morning. On this note, I want us to receive communion. Because I believe God is speaking to us as a church. And as we continue this verse in 1 Corinthians 11 that speaks about remembrance. I want us to remember what he has done and remember what he's called us to. Let's just remain quiet for a moment. Father God, we are reminded again that there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. There is hope. There is peace. There is joy. There is restoration in the name of Jesus. Father God, we are we are sitting here before your communion table. And we are always reminded from 1 Corinthians 11 that we must do this and receive this in remembrance of you. Remembrance of what you have done. Remembrance of what you have accomplished. And we know, Father God, that that is all purpose-driven. Jesus didn't just die on that cross so we can be saved and safe. Jesus died on that cross so that, yes, we can be saved. Yes, we can be restored. Yes, we, uh, our lives will be transformed. But also so that we can be followers of Christ. So that we can be disciples of Christ. Both of those words speak about something that we need to do. Not just something that we need to be. And I pray, Father God, that we would not take for granted what you accomplished on the cross through your Son, Jesus Christ. That we would also not take for granted the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the one who, who lives in us, who we have left to be with us, 
to guide us and lead us, to convict us, and to prompt us. Lord, as we partake of this communion together, whether we are at home or in church, I pray, Lord, that this remembrance would cause us to get up and go. That this remembrance would cause us to not just partake of your body, of the symbol of your body, but that we would share it. To not just partake of the symbol of your blood, but that we would share the message with those around us about the power of the blood. Lord, stir within us such a desire to obey you in all areas. And mostly, Father God, in the area of sharing the gospel message. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus in the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, new agreement in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake together. Father God, we are just so grateful we are just so grateful for what you have done in our lives for a brief moment just looking back at my history seeing how you saved me from that now I can look ahead at my future because of Jesus Christ. Now I have a hope, a hope that is secure because of Jesus Christ. Father God, as a church, we thank you. As individuals who have been saved by your grace, we thank you. We often say, what can we say? Or how can we express our gratitude to you. There's nothing that we can say or do that can say thank you enough. But I beg to differ. There is something we can do to say thank you. And that is to be obedient. To be obedient followers, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. At every time when we speak the gospel message to someone, we are saying, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Every time we go out and show your love and your compassion, we say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. Every time we cook a meal, we say, thank you, Jesus. Every time 
we go out of our way to assist. We say thank you, Jesus. We aren't empty vessels. We are vessels that are filled with the love and joy of Jesus Christ. We are vessels that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us not put a cap on that and keep it contained. But let us open that lid and may that pour out, may it flow out so lavishly so beautifully that everybody would experience the fragrance and the beauty of Jesus. Cause us to be obedient, Father God. Cause us to be hungry. Cause us to be excited to do the things you have called us to do. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together as we receive the benediction. This is from Romans 15, verse 5 to 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, God bless you. Hello, Benedict Thomas here, live from Ottery Baptist Church. We're so glad that you could join us today. I would like to make you aware of online resources available to you from our church. Like and follow our Facebook page, Ottery Baptist, where you will receive daily devotionals, weekly Sunday school lessons for preschoolers and teenagers, and where you can join us for our weekly live Sunday services. Feel free to share this page with your family and your friends. We would really love to hear from you. So if you would like to contact us, you can do so via our website, www.otrybaptist.co.za, our email or our contact number displayed on the screen. Thank you once again for joining us. And join us and our worship team now as we sing our closing song. that you also will be blessed and experience God's goodness and His mercy and grace. Love you much. God bless.